Hi all. Today we will look into the error boundary concept in ReactJS. So, usually in ReactJS, there was no uh, nothing provided to handle our errors till React 16. So, from React 16, we got error boundary concept. Any JavaScript error in the part of the UI should not break whole whole UI component. So, in the React was introduced an error boundary concept. In this error boundary concept, we'll catch the JavaScript errors anywhere in the chain component and we'll log it or we'll display any fallback UI instead of crashing entire component tree. So uh, let me explain these points in an, by taking an example. So Facebook Messenger, this web app, the Facebook has built this with the ReactJS. So they usually wrap each and every part of the component in an error boundary component. For example, here the sidebar, info panel, and the conversation log, everything, each and every part of the component would be separated out and we will be wrapped in an error boundary. So that if any of the component was breaked, not, not all the component would be crashed there. So remaining components would be interactive and the component which was crashed will be showing some user-friendly message to the users so that was the main concept here so let let me take up this with an example so here i have taken a sa sample react create app so i have ta uh, taken a counter component where i will be i have taken an h1 tag if i click that h1 tag i'm going and i'm going to increment the counter value so this was just uh, that much simple i have used that counter component in the app so let's see what here happens. So I'm clicking the just I'm incrementing the number. So here I will uh, introduce one error like uh, if the if the counter comes to three, I will forcefully close through an error. Through this was a manual error. I mean uh, I'm forcefully throwing an error. So counter limit, we have reached the counter max limit. So when the counter reaches to three, so we are forcefully throwing an error. It means we are trying to simulate an error, JavaScript error. So let's see how ReactJS will understand this and how it will interact with this. So see, one, two, three. When it comes to three counter error was raised and we'll be getting like this error. So this will happen throughout all the, it, it will crash the component tree. So if one component crashes, enter remaining components in the container will be crashing and we'll be getting like this. So this occurred because of this JavaScript error. So ReactJS has no idea how to handle this. So that's the where we are introducing uh, error boundary concept. So let's create an, uh, how to handle this for example uh, i'm creating one more component here it means i have two counter components here let me show here so i'm interacting here one two and if i one two if i click three here the down component uh, counter component should interactive it should be there because we are only interacting with the upper co counter component not with the down com counter component so only to the up, upper component, the error boundary should be catched and it should be thrown a fallback UI friendly message and the lower component uh, counter component should be interactive. Still, it should be interactive because we got error in this counter component, not in this counter component in the line number nine. We need to handle these errors. So let's, uh, let's see how we need to handle these errors. I'm taking one, component error boundary so the name should uh, the name can be anything just as to discuss the concept i have used this as error boundary so this name can be anything you wish so i'm extending the component here this is because i need to override one of the method component lifecycle method here so i am extending this so i'm using a constructor and super function and i'm taking here two parameters like error 
there are our two state variables I'm using here to log our error and our error message. So to log these two, I'm taking two error messages here, two state variables. So here uh, for any of the component, whether it is a functional component or a class component, we need to return or render and JSX. So then only we can call it as a component. Here in the error component, we need, this is like a fallback UI. So initially we need to show, we need to override component did catch. So this component will be receiving two parameters, error and error message. So whenever an error occurred or occurs, this component lifecycle method would be triggered automatically. In this component lifecycle method, we need to update the errors and error messages. So we are updating the state variables, error and error message here. So in the render method, we need to write a condition saying if there is any error occurred here. So then return a fancy user experienced uh, message saying something like uh, something went wrong, please try later. So this would be more a uh, friendly message saying uh, the app was crashed. So here have we, I wrote one render, I need to rent, return this JSX. So if this condition is, we get error, then only this fallback UI would be returning to the users. If not, we need to show the, what all the properties we have wrapped in this, we need to show that. Let me, uh, explain you about this. So I have a route and I need to export this error boundary com component. So, so I will import here in the main app.js. In the main app.js, I wrote counter component. So in this counter component, yeah, error boundary, I'm importing the error boundary component. So how I need to use this error boundary component? I need to wrap all the each and every component in this error boundary component. So that like this, I mean, I'm, I'm wrapping the counter component here. And uh, another component, if, if we have four components for each and every component, we need to wrap that in error component. So each and every component would be independent and interactive if other component was crashed. So here we have two counter components. So if we click each and every uh, counter component increments and if it comes to the three, it would uh, it would be destroying. And we'll show how uh, as we have wrapped this counter component with the error boundary, so only this component would be crashed. So this component would be interactive. So this component would be crashed and we'll be showing back a fallback ui to the user so we need to override component did catch method and we need to wrap our component counter component with the error boundary component so let's see this how it works i'm interacting with both the components and if i click the first component if it reaches three c you could able to see uh, we got this error in the because we are running even even we have used the error boundary concept here also we are running the same error this is because we are running our application in the development mode so this will error boundary concept will work in the production mode so we need to get the production build we need to run this in the production build to look this how it works so to run our application in the production build run this command npm run build so we'll get an optimized production build here and it is asking us to run serve serve hyphen s build this command so that this is the production build in localhost 5000 we can see the production build so earlier we have seen the development build so i am running npm run build to get the optimized production build so we got an production build and it is running in localhost 5000 so let me open this localhost 5000 and let's see this is the production build so one two one two so if i click three so uh, the 
two is not so i have uh, i will show it once again one two three one two so if i click here three only this was uh, uh, crashed not entire component tree was crashed so second uh, the another uh, component is still interactive only the component which was uh, crashed we are throwing a fallback ui and the re remaining components would be interactive so remember one more point when when we are using this component in the development mode we will not feel any of the change to to see what really happens to the end users we need to run this application in the enviro uh, production build so we need to run npm run build and optimize will be getting an optimized version of our application and we need to run serve hyphen s build so sometimes we'll be getting that service not uh, identified so we need to install npm so for that we need to install npm install globally serve so in case if you get serve is not identified as an internal command so you need to install serve and then only we can run this serve hyphen s build so this command will run our application in the production mode so that we can in interact with the application so let me explain uh, entire uh, entire concept once again so we have a counter component where we'll be incrementing the counter one one by one so when it comes to the three we are throwing explicitly we are manually throwing an error so in the real world uh, some error may occur so just we are simulating and javascript error here so we are wrapping our component counter component in the error boundary and when the error occurs in the error boundary component the component did catch will be catching that and we are holding that this dot st uh, state dot error if this becomes true we are returning this fallback ui so error message uh, component will consist more details about that particular error so that's all about the error boundary concept so hope you understand thanks for watching